Big hello to everybody, Tin Man here. Um, this video is going to be a little bit longer than normal because I want to go through this step by step. Uh, this is about Lenz's Law and how it can be broken, believe it or not. So like I said, I'm going to take my time run through it bit by bit. Um, so if anybody can see something that I've done wrong or can dispute my findings, uh, feel free to do so. So, as before, um, these two coils here are our run and trigger coils, just for the pulse motor itself. I've got the magnets, they're 10 by 20 rounds, neos, going through north on this side, south on that side. This coil fires north, this coil fires south. So what I'm going to do is this top coil here, as before, I'm going to send through this transformer backwards with a 240 volt to 12 volt transformer. Now, the thing you've got to know about this is on the secondary side, the 12 volt side, I've set this to the ohms reading and I'll just show you what the ohms are. So we've got about 1.2 to 1.3 ohms. So it's almost a dead short. Almost. Um, that's what we're going to be hooking this coil up to, is a near dead short in the transformer. From the secondary side we're going to be driving this LED. Um, this LED at 12 volts pulls 82.8 milliamps. It's got uh, two, four, six, eight LEDs in it. Um, I'm presuming 1.5 volt LEDs to make up the 12 volts. They'll be hooked in series, of course. And we've also got our 24 volt neon. Um, I have made my power saver modification to the pulse motor side of it, uh, which you would have seen in my diagrams. It's just two rectifiers across the trigger coil and I've used a 5k pot so I can tune it spot on for the resistance across the diode on the trigger coil lead or the end of the trigger coil. Um, that's to stop the coil self resonating of course. Um, I'm going to be running it on 24 volts because it runs better on 24 volts. I haven't gone as far to put the um, output power back into the run battery. I just want to leave it charge the 12 volt battery. That currently is sitting on 10.7 volts. And um, like I said, 24 volts. As you might have heard me say before, I've buggered the amp reading up in the power supply by feeding my power back into a cap without having a rectifier there or a diode so it's upset the apple cart with the amp reading it's about 15 milliamps out now so I'm going to use multimeter as our amp reading because it's also a three digit one and not two digits so um, what I'll do now is I, everything's disconnected all three coils are disconnected we're only going to be using the pulse motor side of it to start up, just so you can see the amp draw that the pulse motor is actually using and the current we're putting back into the uh, run battery. So I'll fire it up. As you can see, the charge battery is going up very fast. Pick up speed, find a sweet spot. Also, finally got myself an RPM counter. So, not only am I going to show you that you can make a lensless generator with useful power. Um, I know they've been made before, and they get voltages, but absolutely no current behind them. So 
So the idea of a lensless generator is to generate power without putting extra load on the prime mover. So I'm going to show you how we can get a decent lot of power out of it. Not only is the flywheel going to save the same speed, it's actually going to speed up. Now with a pulse motor, when the rotor speeds up it normally draws more amps because it's firing more times. But with this setup, we're actually going to drop the amp drawer as well, the more load we put on it. So right about there, it's running pretty sweet. We're drawing 172 milliamps to run it. Um, we're putting 125 milliamps back into the charge battery, which is now 10.83. Um, what I'll do is I'll hook this meter back up to the high voltage side of our transformer. That set on AC volts. So it's reading 0 0.012 of a volt. So 12 millivolts. And I mean, even if I uh, touch the leads, the voltage flicks up and down. Very sensitive meter. Um, of course, we're set on the AC because that's what we're going to be running the light at. Okay, we've got 172 milliamps, so what I'm going to do now is this coil here, the top centre coil, I'm going to hook up to our transformer, which we know was a 1.3 um, ohm resistance across the secondary side of it. So like I said, that's almost a dead short. So we'll hook that up. Before we hook that up, Take an RPM reading. Two thousand seven hundred and eight. That's what we've got. Okay, at one hundred and seventy-two milliamps. So I'll hook that coil up to our transformer now. We're now at 149 milliamps, 150. So I'll take an RPM reading now. Two thousand eight hundred and forty-four. So the RPMs are gone up when we've hooked that. 1.3 ohm load up. Our voltage to drive it has gone down. So, so far, we've broken both the rules. Lens as well. Generating a good amount of current in the transformer already through that 1.3 ohm resistance. Our flywheel sped up. Our amp draw on the uh, power supply to run the motor has gone down. So what we'll do now is I'm going to hook up our LED to it as well. So we're now down to 156, 57 milliamps, flicking between those two. So we'll hook our first load up. We're now down to 137 milliamps. Take another RPM reading. Two thousand nine hundred and five RPMs now. So we've put another load on. The flywheel's spinning even faster, and our amp draw's gone down even further. So what we'll do now is we'll hook up another load. Now this load, as before, is connected. So these two coils, I've used these two because it's a pretty hungry little globe at 24 volts. So 
So we've got these two going through the bridge rectifier and into our 24 volt now. So I've hooked that up. So we're at 139 milliamps now. There's our second load. Down to 137 milliamps. Uh, we're still charging uh, 64 millivolts. Uh, milliamps, sorry. 10.84 volts, the battery's gone up to. This has got 14.75 roughly volts going into it. This one I haven't measured, so I'm not sure. Uh, we'll find another meter somewhere. This one. Fifty-six down to 133. Now road is picking up speed with the um, load of the transformer. Charge battery is now up to 10.86. So this goes to show me that wired up in a certain fashion, Lenz's law can not only be broken, it can also, in this situation, spin the rotor faster and drop the amp draw on the prime mover, which is pretty fantastic, I think. Disconnect, and the rotor starts slowing down. So now we're running as a normal pulse motor, once again. Now it is a bit messy because I'm still modifying things. Uh, my next uh, part of the experiment is going to be feeding the pulse back into the run battery, uh, which I'll do with caps because they give us instant results of what's going on and they like to swallow the high voltage pulses better than batteries. <coughs> so 
So there you have it. Before your very eyes. Hook up a load. Now like I said, very hefty load. 1.2 ohms, 1.3 ohms. Flywheel's picking up speed again. Amp draws drop down. So it doesn't get much better than that. Fires fell out. That's handy. So there you have it. You've seen it as it is. Um, anyone can debunk it. Go for it. There's no hidden power supplies anywhere. Turn the power supply off. She all shuts down. So I hope you've enjoyed that one. Um, as you can see, this setup's definitely got a lot of potential. Um, now knowing what's actually happening with the magnetic fields, I should have wound these a little different. Um, I've already started on my second one. The two. Uh, coils that are used for the trigger and the run the coils are going to be wound different now that I know what's going on with the magnetic fields and how they're reacting. Um, well that's about it for the time being. So, hope you've enjoyed that. Debunk it if you can, but I believe I've just proved that Lenz's Law can indeed perhaps not be broken but um, used to our advantage rather than our disadvantage okay till next time cheers from the tin man